things don't always go well in our programs. You are bound to get some errors here and there. But a good programmer can easily deal with JavaScript errors by using proper JavaScript handling. In this video, we will go through JavaScript error handling with detailed explanations and examples so that by the end of this video, you will become very confident with JavaScript error handling. Well, a very warm hello and welcome. My name is Mariam from Data is Good. Let us start our journey in JavaScript error handling. Before we begin, please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't done that already. And do hit the bell icon to stay updated with all the latest videos coming from Data is Good's YouTube channel. Without wasting any more time, let us get started. Here is the agenda. We will first understand what error handling is then the methods of error handling, which will be try, catch, finally, and throw, with detailed explanation and example for each. And lastly, we will be having a little quiz for your practice. Our goal is to make you learn how to use error handling in JavaScript like a champ. Till the end of this video, you will get the whole idea of how to deal with errors and it will be really easy for you to use JavaScript error handling concepts and you will be able to throw your own errors. Well, as we have discussed in the agenda, let us first see what error handling is. No matter how proficient you are with JavaScript, sometimes you are going to get some errors. Now, they may occur because of an unexpected user input, our mistakes, an erroneous server response, and a lot of other reasons. Our program should not stop in the middle of execution because of these errors, right? Don't worry, this is when error handling comes into play. Let us see the ways we can handle the errors. Now, let us see the list of methods that we are about to learn. Try, catch, throw, and finally. VS Code, try, catch method. Try, catch method allows us to catch the errors inside a block of code. Let us see what each of them does. Try. Try statement allows you to check whether a block of code has errors or not. Catch. If the error is generated in the try statement, the catch statement will handle the error. And here is the syntax of the try and catch block. Try. Write your code. Catch. Error. Write your code. This is how the control flows in a try catch block. First code in try is executed. If there are no errors in try block, catch block gets ignored. And if there are errors in the try block, the execution gets stopped and control flows to the catch block. The beginning of the try block has error variable. You can give any name to it. But in programming, it is recommended that a variable should have a name, which will make sense to the code and programmer as well. So the code in the try does not get stopped. We get the chance to handle it in the catch block. But remember, the execution gets stopped when try has some errors. It does not go to the end of try block. VS Code examples of try catch method. We are going to use Visual Studio Code Editor for the examples, since it is very efficient and easy to use. A secret of VS Code is that we can add snippets in them. Let us say you want to write console.log. In the VS Code, there is an option called User Snippets. It allows us to write a shortcut for this. For example, clog. And when you press enter, after writing clog, console.log statement will appear on the editor. This shortcut is custom made, although there are some of their inbuilt shortcuts available that you can use. It will help you to save time. Such type of functionality is available in VS Code, but you can use other editors like Sublime, Notepad. It is totally up to you. Let us dive into the code. First, let us see how an errorless code looks like. The catch code will not be executed because there is no error in the try block. 
this code has an error. As you can see in this example, there is an undefined variable named books. So end of the try block has never been reached. After catching the error, the catch block gets executed. But always keep in mind, in order to use try catch, the code must be runnable. It will not work when you will have any syntactical errors like extra curly braces or missing curly braces, etc. Your code should be valid. VS Code Error Object in Catch Method When the try code has any errors, an object containing the error information is generated and passed to catch as an argument. Try Catch Error Error object has three properties, name, message, and stack. Error.name Name property has the name of the error. For example, the error for an undefined variable is the reference error. List of different types of error object property. Range error When you use a number which is outside of a given range. Eval error, error in the eval function. Syntax error, when syntax error occurs. Type error, when type error occurs. URI error, an error in encode URI has occurred. Error dot message, well it is a textual message informing the details about the error. Books is the undefined variable. So the message of the error is displayed on the browser, which is a type of reference error. Error.stack Stack error object traces all the information and displays it on the browser. But if you want to display the whole content of the error, then you can do that as well. A change in the catch block has been made recently. If you do not want any error details, the catch block can eliminate the error object. Try catch. Since this is a recent addition, you have to check if your browser supports it or not. Sometimes you should create your own error message in case another user cannot understand just the name. For example, here we have called the function add that we have not defined yet. Now it is much easier to understand that the add function is not defined. Rest of the code after error occurrence is skipped. VS Code finally block. Well, moving on to the next agenda of our session, which is finally block. After try and cache, there is another block of code that runs regardless of the result. That means it executes after try if there are no errors. It executes after the catch method if there are any errors. Let us see the syntax of finally block. Try execution of code, catch, error, handle errors. Finally, always executed. And now it's time for an example of finally block. The finally clause is often used when we start doing something and want to finalize it whether the outcome is wrong or right. Please note that variables are always local in the try catch finally. Now let us look at an interesting relation between finally and return. Function rel try return 1 catch error finally alert finally alert rel output finally comma 1 so we have created one function called rel then inside the rel we have added try catch and finally in the try block we are returning 1 and there is a finally block at last we called the function first the finally in the rel function gets alerted Cache method does not get executed because there is no error. And lastly, the one which gets returned. Sometimes we need completion even after there is an error, like measurements. In that situation, we can omit the catch block. Function rel try. Start doing thing that need completion. Finally, complete it even if it dies. Alert rel. 
well, the court is going to be completed successfully. VS Code Throw Block. Throw Block creates custom errors. In simpler words, we can use the throw statements to use user defined exceptions. For example, if a number is divided by zero and you want to consider an exception as infinity, then you can handle the exception with a throw statement. The syntax of throw statement is throw expression. Here the expression defines the value of exception. The expression can be string, boolean, number or object value. For example, let num equal to 5. Throw num divided by 0. Here we are throwing the exception when the number is divided by 0. Throw with try and catch. When we write a throw exception in a try block, then code below the throw exception does not get executed. The control goes to the catch block. Syntax of try, catch, throw. Try, throw exception, catch. Now let us look at the example. So it's time to go through the code and see the control flow. Firstly, we have created a number variable and assigned it a value 50. Then in the try block, there is an if else condition checking whether the number is greater than 100 or not. The control goes to the if condition and checks the number. Obviously, it is less than 100. So it goes to the else block where we have defined our own exception. Else block throws the exception. The next part of the try block does not get executed because after the throw message, because as we discussed earlier, execution gets stopped. Lastly, the control goes to the last block, which is the catch block and displays the error message along with the exception. Well, isn't that interesting? All right, then let us see how we can read throw an exception. You can also throw a statement inside the catch block to read through an exception. Just like the last example which we have seen, we here assigned 5 to the variable number. In the try block, we threw an exception with the message, this is the new throw. We have displayed a message saying an error was caught. In the catch block, we added 8 into the number and checked whether it is greater than 10. If yes, the if block gets executed with the first exception and if not, then the else part of the catch block will be executed where we have rethrown the exception. So output of this code, first the message and error caught will be displayed no matter what. Then the first exception from the if block of catch will display on the browser because 10 plus 8 is greater than 10. So the second exception which we have rethrown will not be displayed. So this is how you handle errors in JavaScript. Go through each example again for a better understanding. And now it's quiz time. Write down your answer in the comment section. We will reply as soon as possible. Dash block will always be executed no matter what the results are. Your options are try, catch, finally throw. With the help of dash statement, you can throw custom errors. Your options are catch, finally, throw, none of the above. Determine the name of the error. Try, add, console.log. The code has been stopped executing. Catch, error, console.log. The function is undefined. Console.log, error, dot name. And your options are reference error, range error, type error, or none of the above. So these are some of the questions that you need to answer in the comment section down below. I really hope that you guys thoroughly enjoyed today's lecture. And if there are any suggestions or concerns, then please go ahead and comment them as well. We will try our very best to reply to each one of your comments. So, do not forget to subscribe to our channel for more informative as well as fun videos like this. Bye, take care.